During my freshman year of high school, my family and I took a trip to the Philippines to celebrate the 100th birthday of my great-grandmother. On the trip, we mainly spent our time in two places. Manila, the capital of the Philippines, which is very similar to other bustling cities such as LA or New York City, except with many jeepneys. And we also went to Boracay, basically the Hawaii of the Philippines, full of white sand beach selfies and freshly clean ocean water. When we had left, we were going to be staying there for a couple of weeks and that included my birthday, so I was very pissed. It was the first time I could celebrate my birthday with my new friends from from high school and I was also still trying very hard to fit in with the other students. But by being gone for a couple of weeks, I would totally be behind in my popularity game. So yeah, I was pretty upset with being gone for such a long time, but I couldn't get out of it. So throughout the plane ride, I mainly listened to two albums to cool me down. The Hamilton original Broadway cast album and Joanne Deluxe by Lady Gaga. Both are still two of my favorite albums of all time. So when the plane lands in Manila, the humidity is the absolute worst. Somehow you're sweating indoors two minutes after you get off the plane, yet it's raining outside. But at least it's not as bad as Orlando weather. Nothing is as bad as Orlando humidity. We spent the first week with my family in Manila and we hit up the locations we always go to whenever we go to the Philippines. The SM Market in Green Hill. Fun fact about me, I threw up once in Green Hills from something I don't remember, but I was very young at the time, so that's for another video. We had also gone to the Mall of Asia, which is one of the largest malls in the world, yet it caused me to develop a new fear. Now I am afraid of getting lost in a foreign country that I do not know how to speak the language, so thank you, Mall of Asia. Still, the mall is so nice, like there's some carnival rides and an ice rink, I think. That's where I even watched Doctor Strange for the first time in a movie theater, but I ended up falling asleep for most of the movie because of jet lag. But I remember being obsessed with this one restaurant in Mall of Asia that I just wanted to keep eating over and over again. It was called Pepper Lunch, and basically they served you your food like on a hot plate, uncooked, and you would need to mix all the food together to cook it properly, and the food was really good. I don't know if they have any vegan options, but I always get the beef plate there because it is iconic. For all of my SoCal folks out there, I know there's a couple of locations in Irvine and Alhambra, I think. There might be one more, but I, I don't know. Anyway, back over to the Philippines. Mall of Asia is huge, but also I somehow ended up in a strange hotel that had like a whole amusement park within it. I never went in, but I wanted to really badly. I remember the engines of it had like Alex the Lion from Madagascar and Kung Fu Panda has like giant statues, but I don't remember what it was. It was just really weird. I, I don't want to give too much of a tour of Manila, even though I practically already did, but I want to get to the actual story of what happened in Boracay. So if you don't know what the Philippines looks like, it's essentially a bunch of tiny islands, an archipelago in technical terms, and you can take boats or planes to get in between certain islands. In order to get from Manila to Boracay, we had to take a plane, and then from the airport to the actual resort we were staying at, we had to take a boat. What such tourists we were. Also, in order to get from place to place, you have to walk along the actual beach. It sounds really nice when you say it, but then you must remember the humidity. The sun was shining so bright, it was impossible to keep your eyes open without squinting, even if you did have sunglasses on. So we arrived at the hotel we were staying at and it finally started to feel like paradise. Thank God for air conditioning. But the outside of my room had like a hammock, which I had never seen before. So that was like the most technological advancement I've ever seen in my eye. And also uh, Netflix was different there. Like they had a whole different library of movies and TV shows, which was very fun to take advantage of. The hotel the hotel room even had stairs in it, which is like the first and only time I've ever seen that. So I was big excited. When we walked into the rooms, for some reason, the TVs were playing Taylor Swift music videos from the 1989 era, but that's like one of her best eras. And also their Disney channel only played the true hidden hits such as Brandy and Mr. Whiskers and House of Mouse, which are still two of my favorite cartoons of all time. I even went parasailing, which was cool, I guess, but Brandy and Mr. Whiskers. But then here's where the story really starts to pick up. So one night my grandmother decided to throw a big party to celebrate our vacation in paradise. Keep in mind, there were like 20 to 30 of us on this trip together. 
So it was nice to have a little party on the beach. There were giant sand castles and torches that lit up the path. We had the nicest view of the sunset against the ocean. It felt like everything was perfect until I started eating. I am a very picky eater. <laughs> Most days I eat rice with some form of chicken or hamburgers. That's really the only options for me. It is so difficult to travel with me because I'm allergic to so many foods. I'm lactose intolerant and I am the pickiest eater. I'm the absolute worst. So at this dinner, I was very concerned with what I was going to eat because I hate branching out and exploring new things. So the only thing that I could really eat at this dinner was pesto pasta, I think. But I think pesto has pine nuts in it, which is a big no-no because I'm very allergic to nuts. So I'm eating this dinner, enjoying my life, laughing with my family while the sun is setting on a perfect day. How could it get any better than this? A deadly allergic reaction, of course. So I slowly start to feel my throat closing up, but I don't mind it. I just think I'm choking on something and need to cough it out, no big deal. So I'm sitting there trying to cough my lungs out of my chest until I realize I'm dying. I start whispering to my mom, hey, I think I'm having an allergic reaction right now. Not knowing that whispering actually requires much more breath than normally talking. Then my mom says, nah, you're fine. And so I believe her because what else am I supposed to do? Listen to my own body? I continue on with dinner, back to laughing, talking, you know, the use. Then again, I feel my throat tighten up even more and I'm starting to panic. I whisper again to my mom, no, I think it's really happening. What do I do? And she's all like, nothing you ate you were allergic to. So again, I believed her and tried to play it off as if nothing was wrong. My throat continues to tighten up more and more to the point where I'm practically gasping for air and I'm unable to focus at all. I whispered to my mom again, I think I need an EpiPen. And of course, we don't have one on us at that moment, so I should have started freaking out and all she told me was to drink some Sprite. Thanks, mom. My mom starts asking everyone what was in the pasta and everyone was like screaming, there's no seafood or there's no eggs because those are other things that I'm allergic to until finally it is revealed that there were pine nuts in the ingredient. I had no clue what pine nuts were before that day, but now I will always remember them. I thought I was only allergic to peanuts, but I guess it's fine nuts too. So without an EpiPen, we start panicking and trying to figure out what we can do to stop my throat from swelling. My skin starts flaring up in hives, though I think it's also because I was feeling very anxious and under pressure and the perfect day continued into being a perfect night. Someone pulls out a Claritin for me to take because it says allergy relief, so it should work. So I take the Claritin and pray that I don't die right there in that moment. Thankfully, I begin to feel my throat start opening back up again and I start crying tears of joy. I asked if I could go back to the room to heal from this tragic event and they let me, but they made me walk all the way back along the beach by myself and I was terrified of being kidnapped because of that one Liam Neeson movie. Fortunately, I make it back in one piece and turn on the TV to help me calm myself down. But the TV betrayed me and did the exact opposite because once I had turned it on, the results of the 2016 election had just come out and that caused me to cry even more. And furthermore, I went on Instagram and saw a video that my entire high school did of the mannequin challenge. This was like in 2016, it was huge right then. And so I cried even more that I missed out. 